Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Arian Summers. The Saints wrapped up their fourth straight practice Monday before they'll get an off day tomorrow on Tuesday. The team then will return Wednesday for a week of game prep with the first preseason game Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs, the former Super Bowl champions or reigning Super Bowl champions at noon in the Caesar Superdome. On today's podcast, Saints wide receiver coach Cody Burns joins me to talk about what to expect from the receivers this upcoming season. Burns is entering his second season as New Orleans wide receivers coach after joining the team in 2022. He coached at the collegiate level for 10 seasons prior to joining the Saints, most recently at Tennessee. Before working as a wide receiver coach at UT, Burns spent six years at Auburn, where he played quarterback and wide receiver himself. As a senior wideout in 2010, he helped Auburn to a perfect 14-0 season and the national title, scoring the opening touchdown on a 35-yard pass reception in the national championship game against Oregon. Here's Coach Burns. Cody, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. I appreciate the time. How are you doing today? Doing wonderful. Just finished up. I don't even know what practice it is, but... uh, It's 11. Yeah. Practice number 11, so I feel pretty good so far. Good. It is year two for you, so going into your second training camp, what's different? Uh, just, I think, my f- familiarity with the guys, um, just in that room, them kind of knowing who I am, me getting a better understanding of who they are, um, and also just a better overall you know, knowledge of being in the system, just the intricacies of the game, and really being able to help these guys out um, on a day-to-day basis. Um, so, you know, big jump from year one to year two. And just being in this organization, um, top class, top level organization. And like I said, really just being around the guys and them getting to know me better and me knowing them better as well. You said big jump from year one to year two, but how big of a jump was it from college to pro? I mean, your first job in the NFL. Listen, the jump was incredible. There is absolutely no recruiting. Um, So that's (laughs) that's the blessing um, part of it that you just don't have to deal with those headaches. And it's just football, you know, 100% of the time. And so year round, 365. And all you're worried about is getting your guys better. You don't have to necessarily worry about in-home visits and recruiting calls and all this other stuff that kind of distracts you from the game of football. So it's been really fun um, from that aspect of just, you know, being 100% football and getting a chance to be a part of one of the best offenses in, in really NFL history. What does a typical day look like for you when you're preparing for camp right now and the practices? You know, a, a typical day is, uh, you know, the, and you kind of alluded to the difference between college um, and the NFL, but... In the NFL, you just have a lot more meeting time. And so you really have to be prepared for your meetings um, to really give the players, you know, just those details. They really want the details. These guys are pros. They know the plays. They understand the plays. Um, it's, it's their job to, to really know what to do, but it's my job to help them do their job better. Um, so just really just being super detailed in the meeting, um, just showing them clips from, you know, other teams previous years, you know, any of the little details that really helps them out. And then also just taking my knowledge from what I've learned and just really trying to get them 1% better every day. You mentioned one of the best offenses in the league. Obviously, it starts with wide receiver Michael Thomas coming back. Where do you feel like he is right now in his return from injury? I think he looks phenomenal. Um, I tell people this time last year, um, I thought he was a little bit hesitant, you know, coming off the ankle injury. Um, This is the first time that at least I've seen him. He looks 100% healthy. He looks ready to roll. He looks twitchy, explosive. I think he's got really good change of direction. And, uh, you know, up in practice, he's really been going against Lattimore every mm-hmm. single day, which is one of the best corners in the NFL. And so iron sharpens iron. Um, they've really been going at it each day. You know, sometimes Lack gets the best of them. Sometimes Mike gets the best of them. And one thing that I always tell Mike and really our wide else is that these guys, our defense, really knows what we do. They understand, you know, when he lines up here, when he takes this stem, because they see it every single day. And so if you're able to win um, versus our defense in those situations, I think it makes us better because once you start playing other teams, they don't see that every single day. And uh, like I said, it, it's going to make it really tough on us each and every day in practice. But at the end of the day, I think it's the best for the team. Okay, Lat's been beating him most of the time in practice so far. I know that Michael Thomas takes everything very serious. He wants to be perfect in everything that he does. He looks like he gets frustrated sometimes. How do you manage the mental aspect? 
Yeah, I don't least. know who's counting that, saying Lats beating them every time. Yeah, I don't know who's <laughs> keeping count. Um, I know they battle. Not every time. Yeah, every single time. Every every day they battle back and forth. But I will say this. Um, you know, Mike is an ultra uh, competitor. Um, he's really hard on himself. Um, and then really, you know, if Lat does get the best of him, he wants to know what he can do better. Mm-hmm. You know, he's obviously going to get upset that, you know, that happened. But at the same time, it's it's a lot of it has to do with, you know, him and uh, Mike and, and Derek really getting on the same page as far as in the passing game, you know, where Mike likes the ball, what what, the, what that location looks like when Lat's playing this way, what Mike can do to counter that. And so the more and more reps they get together, I think it's just for the better. And like I said, you know, Lat kind of knows Mike a little bit, and it's just really Mike and D. Carr getting on the same page, what they have been on uh, the last couple of days. With the addition of Derek Carr, how much does that change what you're able to do off Offensively. Listen, um, I think we have three extremely um, talented quarterbacks um, and, and really D. Carr, just what he's been able to do in this league. Um, he's really good in the pocket. He can escape the pocket as well, um, doesn't get flustered, can make all the throws. And so really you're just bringing a veteran quarterback in here with what I think is a really solid you know, wide receiver running back in tight end room. And you bring D. Carr, um, a gunslinger like him, who's had some success in this league, um, I think it really just opens everything up for us in the offense. How much time do you spend with the quarterbacks, talking to Ronald Curry or Derek Carr in relation to your work with the wide receivers? You know, I spend um, a lot of time on a day-to-day basis uh, with RC, with DJ, um, as well as the quarterbacks because we have to be on the same page in the receiver room with the quarterbacks and I've always told my guys because I played that position, the quarterback position, and they got a lot on their plates, right? They got to make sure they tell everybody what to do. They got to break the huddle. Um, they got to make sure they get the mic points right. They got to ID the defense, and then they got to know what everybody does. And so it's always good for us in the receiver room to really know um, what the quarterback was thinking and what they're seeing. There's, there's a perspective from a receiver how they see things, mm-hmm. and there's a perspective from how the quarterback sees things because a quarterback has to worry about more so the timing aspect. They know the D-line is rushing them, and they got to get the ball out their hands, whereas receivers may feel like, hey, I got plenty of time to really work this guy on this route. But it's always good for the wideouts to really hear how they see it, and I think that's what we do here is really good, and we watch practice as quarterbacks and wideouts every single day together. How much is Derek Carr reaching out to you? Because we've heard from all the receivers, offensive players, that – they get clips from him. They get texts from him all the time. I mean, do you guys have that kind of rapport as well? We do. Um, I talk to Derek, you know, every single day. And like I said, I actually saw Derek out in Lake Tahoe at the uh, Celebrity Golf Tournament, which was good. Um, but, you know, we talk daily. Um, and he hadn't necessarily shown me clips. Mm-hmm. But we talk about just about every single play and how he sees it or how I see it. You know, he's like, hey, KB, what are your thoughts on this? And I'll tell him what I'm thinking. And vice versa, I'll say, D-Car, like, t- talk to me about – what you saw on this play, what can Mike do better, what can Alave do better, so on and so forth to really help you so we can get on the same page. Sure. Going back to a couple of last year's rookies with Chris Alave and Rashid Shahid, Alave talked about how he wanted to work on his contested catches, that side of his game. How have you seen him grow? I've seen Alave grow tremendously. Um, I've seen a guy that you know came from college as, as one of the most talented players in the country and transitioned into the NFL and made a lot of plays last season. But he knows that there's some things in this game that he needs to work on, Mm -hmm. one being contested catches, and I think he's really improved that. He's gained a lot of weight in this offseason. And and really for a rookie um, and also a young player in this league, it's really about knowing how to take care of your body. And it's really good for Olave to be around Mike Thomas for another year now to see really what Mike puts his body through on a day-to-day basis, even in the offseason, to get to where he can play at that elite level. And so that's really good for Olave to see as far as just how he can control his body to uh, to be ready for the season. And uh, like I said, I think I've seen a big improvement from him, competitive catches, his perimeter blocking. Mm-hmm. And he's already got a great skill set, but just really just fine-tuning those skills. I think Olave is going to take a big jump from year one to year two. How much more are we going to see from Rashid Shahid and his involvement in the offense? Man, Rashid is, is – I think one of the better playmakers in this league. Um, he's extremely quick. He's got really good top end speed. He can separate. There's not a route that you really don't want Rashid to run. And so I think from year one to d- year two, you'll see a lot more 22. He changed his number from 89 to 22. Mm-hmm. So you'll see a lot more 22 this season coming up. Um, you look at last year, really, I, I, I give you know all the respect to Rashid because he's a guy that 
was really injured in the off season, didn't get many reps. Right. And then a couple of injuries happened and, and we put him out there and his first two touches go for touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And so when that happens, you really start to think as a coaching staff, man, we got to find ways to get him the ball. And so with what he did last year, with the little bit of reps that he has, um, his role is really going to grow for us on offense. And I think we're all excited to get him the ball and see what he can do. How much are we going to see Alvin in the past game? Man, a- AK is, is – I'll say this. The more and more I've been around Alvin, his elite talent in the passing game is, is so impressive because he has feet like a receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, he understands how to leverage DBs and linebackers and get his cleats in the ground, change the direction, how twitchy he plays. It's, it's really impressive. He's as good – as I've seen at that position um, as far as doing that. So I think, you know, what D Carr has – I think D Carr has really seen the same mm-hmm. as like, man, Alvin's the guy that really gets open. So we're going to find ways that involve AK in the passing game because that makes us better. Whenever you can put him out at number one, put Alvin at two, you can put him to the field. I think it's going to give defenses problems because now you have to worry about Alvin Kamara. you got to worry about Jawan Johnson. you got to worry about Jimmy Graham. you got to worry about – Alave, she, Mike Thomas, where these guys are lining up at. And I think that's a lot of stress on the defense when a running back can catch the ball at the backfield. Mm -hmm. When you're starting to fill out the rest of the wide receiver room, talking about somebody like Traquan Smith who has a completely different skill set and his blocking ability, how important is that? I think it's really important. Um, I've always talked about being a star in your role. Um, He's done a really good job for this organization of, of really putting his body on the line. You know, every single year, you know, he's a guy that's been banged up because mm-hmm. of some of the dirty work things that he's been asked to do. But I'll say this about Traquan. I think Traquan is a receiver. Um, he does do the dirty work things. He does block linebackers and sometimes D linemen. But at the end of the day, I think Traquan's a really good player. Um, he's improved his game. Um, he's taken things, you know, to the next level, I think. And he's a guy that you feel comfortable with that if one guy goes down or another guy goes down, like last year, he's a guy that can go in and get you 100 yards. Um, on a weekly basis. So I love Traquan. I, I really appreciate how he approaches the game every single day. And um, you, ex- I, I expect to really see him this upcoming season too. Another player who adds a lot of length out there, tall body, is A.T. Perry, the rookie. Yeah, A.T. A. is um, a really talented young player. Um, A.T. has a special skill set um, at the line of scrimmage. I think it's really elite, honestly. He's so twitchy. He's able to maneuver his body and reduce surface areas and play on edges. It's really impressive. And, you know, as a young player, you know, coming from the ACC, not the not the wear and tear, the grind of some of these other leagues. That it, I thought that, you were about to just show, throw some shade on the ACC. No, and like I Not mean, the elite, like football yeah, conference, because that's where yeah, I am from. But. He, he um, <laughs> <laughs> just more man-to-man, you know, in the SEC, a little bit more of a dog-dog league. But at the same time, it's really good for him that every single rep he takes in practice against a Lattimore, Debo, Alante Taylor, he starts to understand, man, I got to play more physical and mm-hmm. be more violent because he's got the length, he's got the athleticism, and now he's just got to continue to get stronger, you know, in the pass game, and he's going to be a really good player for us. You have 13 wide receivers right now in the room. That's the most of any position group. It's a lot of people to have to work with on a daily basis. How much of it is just because of the nature of preseason games as well and just needing people to play? Well, you always need bodies. Um, We're doing a really good job with uh, Dr. Ray and uh, DA as far as uh, the load management Mm -hmm. on some of these guys that that are going to play a lot of minutes. And so you're going to have to have bodies. And the good thing about having 13 guys is that it, it brings a competition to the room. I mean, we got a really tight group in that room, uh, do a lot of things together. Um, but at the same time, we're competing. Mm-hmm. We're competing for roster spots. Um, we're competing for practice squads uh, spots. And we're trying to make this team better. So um, I like the fact that we have 13. And when those guys get those opportunities, you got to go out there and show what you can do and make plays. Watching practices, you're always the, the guy that's out there with the, the returners. Is that something that is part of your job responsibility as well, is kind of bringing those guys along? I mean, obviously, they're most of them are receivers. Yeah, listen, um, anything that, you know, DA, uh, Riz um, need from me and they want me to work with the Turners, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and we got some pretty pretty dang good ones, too. You mm-hmm. know, 22 is not, not too shabby, and we got some young guys that we're working on. Um, so I'm excited to really see what these guys can do. I appreciate talking about football. How have you liked New Orleans? New Orleans. New Orleans is a – different 
city and the fact that um, these people ride or die for the city, um, I think it's phenomenal just how they support the Saints. It, it's almost like its own little world, its own culture. And that's what I love about New Orleans is that it's a small town, but yet big enough. They love the Saints. Um, it's just so much history and culture here. And, and the food is, is fantastic. I'll say the food is five stars. That's the best part about it to me. Um, but the city um, means a lot to these people. And I, I know they love the Saints and the Pelicans. Yeah, we'll be in the Superdome pretty soon with the first preseason game coming up on Sunday. What are you looking forward to most about this upcoming season? You know, this season, um, I, I thought last year there was a lot of injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and obviously, whenever you're, I think we were ranked out of 32 teams, I think we might have been 31 as far as injuries. And so right now, you know, knock on wood, we're really healthy. And I think that, that we got the talent. Um, we got the skill set. We got the players. We got the coaches. And I'm excited, you know, to really go out and try to compete to win this division and really get in the playoffs. I think the goal is to win a divisional championship. And that's what I'm looking forward to is doing that. And then also getting in the playoffs and making noise and see what happens. Because in the playoffs, anything can happen. It's week to week. But like I said, I think the biggest thing I'm excited about is really competing for a division title. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to join the podcast. I know you don't have a lot of it. You're pretty busy. But I appreciate it. And good luck with the rest of training camp. Thank you very much. Again, really appreciate the time from Coach Burns. Now, with the season approaching, that means the Saints kickoff run presented by Hancock Whitney is also around the corner. You can join us Saturday, September 9th, as the Saints fans will race through the city and finish on the 50-yard line of the Caesars Superdome. Proceeds benefit Louisiana National Guard Foundation and its mission to support its members, veterans, and families. You do not want to miss out on this event. Head to saints5k.com for more information and to register. It all takes place the Saturday before the Saints season opener against the Tennessee Titans. We'll be back with another episode of the Saints podcast on Wednesday as we start to preview the Saints first preseason game. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the conversation with Coach Burns. Talk to you again soon. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.